Hi, this is Robin, and in this video I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating how to use luminosity masks in Photoshop to transform your images so that they have more impact. Now, luminosity masks let us select very precise shadow, highlight, and midtone ranges in images so that those areas, those different lighted areas of your images, whether they're dark, light, or middle, can be adjusted to give them more impact, more wow, more pop, whatever you want to say. So you can use these luminosity masks to alter contrast, modify color, change darkness and lightness in a scene, or do a mix of those things with very precise control over the areas of lightness or darkness that are being affected. What I found is that luminosity masks actually enable subtler transitions between adjacent areas in your images than most manually created masks. So the thing is, is if you were to use, let's say, the lasso tool or the object selection tool or the quick selection mask and to pick an area of an image and then say, I want to make an adjustment there. The edges of those selections will typically be very hard edged. So the, any transformations that you make or adjustments or enhancements that you make will be very obvious and not particularly subtle. However, with the luminosity mask that we're going to be talking about in this video here, luminosity mask right there, um, they tend to feather the selection. The way they work, the mask works, is that they are auto feathered and they have softened edges. So the transitions between areas that have been adjusted and those that haven't are more subtle and even though the image gets more impact, it doesn't look as glaring as to where you've made the changes. Now, I've been talking about luminosity masks and saying that this video is about luminosity masks. If you aren't familiar with them, here, let's just quick look at this. A luminosity mask is a black and white version. So here's examples here of a image and it's used as a mask on a layer in Photoshop. So for instance, over here on the right, this would be a typical layer. And let's say this is your thumbnail that would represent something like this. These masks, a single one of these masks would sit to the right of that in the mask area on the layer. So you are generating black and white versions of your image that can be used as masks to adjust specific parts of your images. Now, whatever is white in the mask is something that you can adjust. Whatever is black in the mask, you can't adjust. And whatever appears in gray can be adjusted somewhat. So the tones and the levels of the grays will determine how much adjustment you can make. Now, if this feels overwhelming and you're a real new beginner to Photoshop, um, I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up right up front that this video is assuming a basic understanding of Photoshop masks and how they work. So I'll explain some things like I just did about the whites, the blacks, and the grays, but I'm not going to do, do it from a beginner standpoint. Okay, so hopefully just the way the walkthroughs are done, you'll be able to follow and I'll try to explain as much as I can. Now, in this first video, I may ha I think I'm going to have to do this as two separate videos because there's a lot of different ways to approach luminosity masking. In this part one video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create and work with luminosity masks using a free plugin that is available through Adobe called the TK Loom Mask Panel. Okay, and they, I might throughout this video abbreviate Luminosity Mask to just be Loom, which would be those first three letters and mask. So if I call it a Loom Mask, it's the same thing as Luminosity Mask as I go. This free plugin is a very fast way to work. It's considerably faster than how to create luminosity masks manually step by step. So I'm going to show you how to get the free plugin and add it to your Photoshop interface. And then in a separate video, in case you don't want to get the um, plugin or don't want to have this panel in your Photoshop, I will demonstrate how to create your own luminosity masks step by by step. It is a much more time consuming process, but if you want that option so you don't want 
and, and you do not want to use the plugin, then I'd like you to learn or be able to use that also. Um, I do want to say right up front, I am not affiliated either with Adobe or the person whose Loom Mask panel plugin I'm going to be showing, and I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. It's just something that I use, I like using, I find it, it really can add to my images and what how they appear. So I just wanted to share it with you in one of these classes, okay? So I'm gonna show examples of how to use the luminosity mask that we create with the plugin. And I'm going to put, uh, therefore, because there's multiple demos and explanations of where to find the plugins and things like that, I will put links to the start times for each topic that I cover in the description below the video. And that way, if you want to hop around between demos or if you've over, already reviewed one part or want to take a break between demos, you can do that and then just go to the start of each main chapter or topic heading. Okay, so look below uh, the video in the description for that. Also, one last housekeeping thing, so about subscribing. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, which is free, you're all set. Um, if you are new to the channel and you'd like YouTube to notify you, I think I send you a single notification when I post new tutorial content and you have not subscribed yet, then you can click on the subscribe button below the video and the black bell icon, and then you will get a single alert when there's new content. So with all that background on what luminosity masks are, these black and white versions of images, and we'll get right into where you can get the plug-in panel that I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. So let me close this and move on to that. Okay, so let me make this a little bigger so you can read it more easily. Okay, so now uh, to get the free TK Loom Mask Panel, and the TK stands for Tony Kuiper, who is the guy who developed it. And again, I am not an affiliate of his. This is just something that I find useful and want to share. Um, this TK Loom Mask Panel is something that will help you auto-generate luminosity masks and very quickly create adjustment layers that you can work with the masks that are created. And so that's the focus of this video is how to use that plugin and in different ways to use it. All right, so in order to get the panel and the plugin, you go up here to the windows here up at the top of the interface, the Photoshop interface, click on Windows, come down to where it says Find Extensions on Exchange, and Exchange is Adobe Exchange. So I'm not going to do it because I don't want to go into my account, but you would click where it says where I have the blue highlight here to go into the Adobe Exchange. So I will just close that. When you go in, you will see a page and be shown a page that looks something like this. That's where you'll be taken. This is where all their different plugins are, okay? So when you get to the Adobe Exchange, just be sure that the app type that you're looking for is on plugins. And in the search bar, and that's right over here on the left, you would only have to type in TK for Tony Kuiper. And uh, make sure that it has Photoshop checked so you get the right plugin for the right tool. We're working with Photoshop here. So after you type TK, this is the kind of page that will come up, and this is the panel you're looking for right here. The product that you're working for is the TK Luminosity Mask. And you can see, look, it's getting five-star ratings, so it's very well regarded. It's not just something that I'm recommending, and best to me of all is it's free. <laughs> so all you would have to do when you get to this page in the Adobe Exchange is click here, left-click where I've got my green highlighter on the TK Luminosity Mask. That will take you to the full product page for this plugin. And I don't have a snip of that, but it'll be very intuitive what to do once you get there. Um, so it will list the current release of the panel that's available. And it will also mention, Tony will mention there, what versions of Photoshop the panel is compatible with. So just be sure to check that. If you have an older version of Photoshop, you might want to check it just to be sure it's going to be compatible with the version that you are using. Now, I don't remember if it says it on that page or not, but two things to keep in mind. So first, luminosity masks work best if you have decent dynamic range in your image that you're going to be processing, meaning a nice 
pretty much full spectrum of tones from darks to lights or close to a full spectrum of tones from darks to lights because the whole benefit of the luminosity masking as i said is it can help you hone in on very selective luminance or lights in your images or darks in your images so you want enough variety that it will help you get to the very specific ranges of light or dark you want to affect in your image the other thing to keep in mind is that the panel only works on 8 or 16 bit rgb images so you need to keep that in mind and be sure that if it's not working you can check that i'm going to show three demos of how to work with this TK Loom Mask panel, a uh, plugin or panel, and uh, show you some of the different tools that it offers. So let me close this for just a minute. And because, so this is the first image I'm going to work with, but I just want to show you here so that because I said the panel only works on eight or 16 bit RGB images, if you open your image and you're not able to get the Loom Mask panel to work, come up to that upper part of your interface where it says image, down to mode and fly out and you can see my image is checked that it is RGB color and this particular one is 8 bits but it would also work with 16 bits so uh, if you have a 32 bit it's not going to work so as long as it says RGB is checked and either 8 or 16 bit this panel plugin will work. Okay, so let's get started with the demos of how to work with the TK Loom Mask panel that will generate luminosity masks and let you work on layers to adjust them with various types of adjust adjustments. So this is demo number one, and this is a stock photo of Yosemite National Park. I believe it's Tunnel View with El Capitan and Half Dome and Bridal Veil fall over in this area somewhere. So the first thing I always suggest when you're going to do any kind of post-processing, but especially with luminosity masks, is evaluate your image. Don't just go diving in and start making adjustments understand for yourself what it is you want to achieve. What do, do you think will make your image more impactful? Because then you know what tools to work with. So let's just look at this stock photo as an example of the first step, which is evaluate the image. To me, uh, this image looks rather dull and flat. I don't think it has a lot of dimension. All the tones seem to be pretty much the same. There's nothing that's standing out and there's no real depth to this. It, it's kind of blah, for lack of a more articulate way of saying it. There's no differentiating tones. There's no differentiating lights to draw the viewers, viewers in and hold their attention. I um, will say it's well framed. I think that aspect of it is nice. So this is what I mean by evaluate your image. Be very pragmatic about what you see in it, what's working, what isn't, and what you need to fix. All right, so we have an idea of what we want to fix with this. So now we want to work with this TK Loom Mask Panel plugin that has been installed. So I come right over here. So I have mine panel docked right here and it'll say TK. It'll look like that when it's collapsed. So I will left click on that to expand it. If you don't see anything like that, or if you don't see this panel all already out and showing in your workspace, you can come to, where is it? Windows, yeah, here, the window menu and extensions, ta -ta -ta -ta. here we go, sorry, it's not under window, that's right. plugins, there we go. Yeah. Come to plugins, come down and look, and there it is right there. So I also have one by him called Gen Fill, which works with the uh, generative fill in Photoshop, and it's a very good plugin. Um, so here we want the TK Luminosity Mask, and if yours isn't showing already, just click on that, and then it will be visible in your workspace, okay? So the first thing I always recommend before we work on anything is to duplicate your background layer over here on the right side of the interface. So you can either in your layers panel, drag that to the bottom of the layers panel to the box with the plus, which is the add new 
layer icon and get a copy, or you can do a Control or Command J to jump a copy up, but work on a copy, not the original. Okay, so once you get your panel open, you'll see this little tri-color, tri-toned box here. Left click on that to launch the panel, and here we go. So now we're into the pop-up version of the tools that are available for the panel. And just like I told you in the introduction, you can see that now my image has been converted to a black and white version of the image. And if you look here in this panel, this little opposite facing arrows is a toggle. If you click on that, you can see your original image. If you click on it again, you get the black and white. Okay, so let's look first here at the darkness and lightness tones that can be adjusted because I said it's a luminosity mask. So we're looking at luminance, darkness, and lightness in the image and how to adjust it. Now what you'll notice in this mask generation tool area is that it parallels a histogram in terms of where the tones are. So it runs from the blacks at the left towards the midtones or the shadows if you want to think of that, shadows to the midtones to the highlights. So it's black to white at the opposite ends, okay? Now we want to work with these darkness and lightness maps to generate the loom mask that you want to use with your image. So again, you will not be using the exact same zones or regions of darkness and lightness that I do, but you find the right one for your image. So as I said, we want to adjust these tones here. So let me look here first. So from the center here, that's the first of the lights or the highlights is number one. And as we go to the right, it gets more and more selective about which highlights it is going to be focusing on. So let's see, we're on number one. Number two, look at that. So you can see it's reducing the number of highlights that it will select for the mask and areas of the image that can be selected for the mask that can be adjusted. Let's keep going. Three, four, region four, region five, region six. So you can see as you go to the right, it gets more and more selective about the highlights or the lights going to the right. Now, what do we say? The darks are over on the left, so the reverse is true. You'll work from one to six going from the most dark areas. So let me just show you again so you'll see here the image. That's a dark area. All right. And as we go left for the dark colors, one through six, you'll see fewer and fewer dark areas that you can adjust in your image with adjustments. Okay, so you're going to have to pick for your image and I would do it and this is how I do it. It's all trial and error. So I just start at one and two and three till I get past where I want to go. So let's just try it with this one and see how it works. Okay, so here's the lights or the highlights one region for this image of mine that I want to adjust. and. I mean, that's fine, but it's, I think too much of the image is being affected right now. So I want to limit it to fewer areas of the image because that's part of the problem now. This is all too much of a unitone, single toned, it's very flat image. I want to differentiate. So let me try zone or region number two for the lights. This is better for me and for what I want to accomplish because now, let me click on this other tool that's in this panel. So if you look here where my highlighter is, you see that little red square? It's an overlay and it too is a toggle. So if you left click on that, now you see with the overlay where in the image, which parts of your image will be affected by any adjustments you make. The more saturated the reds, the more adjustment impact there will be. The paler and then when it gets to the pinks, the less adjustment impact there will be, okay? So this just helps you to visualize where you will be making adjustments. So you can left click on that again, as I said, it's a toggle. Okay, so this for me is good and this is what I want to use as my luminosity mask. Now, as I said right up front in the introduction, you can adjust using different tools 
adjustment types, etc. So that's why after you decide on the type of luminosity mass that's being auto-generated for you in this area, by the way, these are the midtones, but we'll look at that later, okay? Um, then you can use any of these types of tools here as adjustment layers to apply this mask to. And sorry, I know this is complicated, but stick with me here. Now, each of these symbols, if you want to see what they are and see a brief description of what they are and how they're going to work, press and hold your Alt or Option key and then hover. Okay, so this icon here stands for curves. So if you want to use this mask on a curves layer, you would click on that icon. If you want to use that mask, on a levels layer, adjustment layer, you'd click on this icon. If you want to use that mask on a brightness and contrast layer, you would click on this icon. If you want to adjust the hue and saturation of the white areas of this mask, you'd click on this. And if you want to use a photo filter, in other words, just to add some colors to the image, you, it's almost it's very close to, but different than a um, color lookup kind of an effect. You could use something like this photo filter. So rather than go through all of those different boxes, let me just pick one and show how it works. Now, the other thing that I want you to be aware of here is just look over here in the layers panel at right for a moment. As soon as you open this panel, there will be two temporary layers here. Once you choose an output method that you want to use for your mask, they will converge into a single layer. So you'll see that in just a moment. If you change your mind and decide you do not want to work with a specific mask or a certain layer, or you just don't want to do the luminosity mask after all, click on this X to cancel. Don't just drag these layers to the trash can. Okay, so if you want to quit, just hit the X. But right now I want to use this layer two, level two, region two, whatever you want to call it, luminosity mask. And I want to work with brightness and contrast. So I'll click on that icon. So, all right, so now let's look over in the layers panel. And this will get more intuitive once we get through just one of these. So we've got a brightness and contrast layer added here because of this panel. And let me just show you, there's the loom mask. That's the same one we saw in the tool. So it just puts it on the layer next to brightness and contrast. So now you work with this just like any other adjustment layer. So here we are in the layers panel. In the properties panel for that layer, yours might be just reverse locations and mine. So here's the properties that's associated with that. Then you can adjust your brightness, either lighter or darker, depending on your image. So I want mine to be a little brighter in this area. So I'm just going to click and start dragging until I see it doing, you can watch the image because the numbers will be irrelevant to you since you're not working with this. But I'm pulling it to the right to make this a little bit brighter. Let's see how that's doing. All right, so I'm clicking the eye visibility on and off and you can see. So it, as I said, it's making a subtle change, but it's giving more definition to that rock face there. Now, contrast, I don't like to personally crank up contrast. In fact, I tend to like to reduce it, which is what I'm going to do just a little bit because I think it, it helps, um, especially when I've pushed the brightness up. I don't want to over define anything. So I pulled my contrast a little bit, just a very little bit to the left. So again, in with this luminosity mask applied to this brightness contrast layer, those brightness contrast adjustments I just made are only being made to the white or lighter gray areas of this image. They're not affecting the dark areas. That's why I'm saying it's giving you a lot of control with the lum luminosity mask to only affect the specific regions in your image that you want affected. Okay, so let me turn that off and go back to that layer. Okay, so now I just did something with the highlights. Now let's look at the shadows. So again, to get back into the pop-up box, left click 
on that. So this time we're going in this left direction towards the shadows, one through six towards the shadows, okay? So again, let me just start with number one in the shadows. So you can see all of the, I'll click on the overlay so you can see. So the entire image is pretty much being affected. So that's not so good and that's not gonna be helpful. I want it to work with specific areas. Okay, so let's just keep going. So let's try darks or shadows region number two. Ah, okay, so that's limiting it even more, but you can see the areas where it's most going to be affected are these darkest pinks in here. Let me keep going. That's better, because I just, again, arrows both directions, you can look at the image. Yeah, see, so these are the areas I'm trying to do something with in here now, so just watch where the masks are. Let me go to four and see what happens. That might be a little bit too limiting for me so and that's what I said I find it helpful to just go past where you want to be and then come back so I'm going to work and you can know which region or tonal zone you're working with because it will be boxed in with the green so I'm going to use this layer th or level three region for my dark tones in my image and I'll just click on this toggle to turn that overlay off so this is the luminosity mask that I have created to work with the darks in my image, okay? So now, just like I did with the last highlights layer, now I wanna pick what kind of output layer I want this mask to be applied to. And for me, I wanna use a curves for this. So I, this is the curves again. If you forget what these icons stand for, you, you can use press Alt or Option, keep it depressed, and just hover, and then you can exit out after you. So here's the curves. I'll click on that. So again, in the Layers panel in the right-hand side of the interface, I now have the curves layer that I said that I wanted. I've got that luminosity mask that we just selected based on highlights and shadows. So I was working with the shadows this time. And now we're going to work with the curves. So with that curves layer active, you can tell it's active because they have the highlight there. And with my thumbnail active with the white frame around it, look in the properties panel associated with that curves layer and you should see a curve. Okay. And so now what I'm going to try, and I like to often try sometimes as a first step is, I'm just going to try auto because sometimes the auto tools in Photoshop are very good. So I'm just going to click, left click on the word auto and see, yeah, you can see it brightened it up. So here, watch the image. I'll turn the eye visibility for that layer off and on. There's off and on. And you can see it's mostly affecting because of the I did the shadows luminosity mask, the shadowy areas, and it's brightening up the areas that were very dark before, okay? Now, while we're here and talking about this auto button, I just wanted to point for curves, I just want to point something out to you. So if you press on and hold Alt or Option and left click on that word auto, what will pop up are the algorithms that you can select to work with. And there's a variety of algorithms you can see listed here. I have my auto set so that when I click auto, it automatically enhances brightness and contrast. You might want to use find dark and light colors, but I keep mine set to enhance brightness and contrast. So that's just something for you to know about if you want to set your algorithm. I would suggest you do not click the save as defaults because it will it's sticky. The next time I do this, it's going to still be on this anyway. So unless you want to redo everything, I'd say do not click to save as defaults. Okay, so let me just cancel that because I already have it set. Okay, so now we have the curves done with the auto setting. Now, I think we still need to bring back a little bit of oomph, for lack of a better word. So a little bit more of the shadow depth, the shadow richness here. So I do want to crush the blacks slightly. In other words, make the blacks richer in the area that we're working on with this luminosity mask. So in my properties panel, I'm going to come down to where the blacks is. See the black down here in the corner? I'm just going to take that and push it a little bit more to the right. There we go. See, watch the image. 
it gives it a little bit more personality. How's that for a technical term? If you push it up, if you take that black point and push it up, it starts getting hazier or milkier. And at least for me, so if you wanted to look like there was a foggy, hazy look in the valley, in your landscape image, in whatever image you're doing, I would say move it up. If you want it to have a little richer, more defined, deeper look, then pull it a little bit right. So that's what I've done. I've pulled it right. Okay. All right. So, so far, the first two steps are we've worked with a highlights luminosity mask to adjust the brightness and contrast. We've worked with a shadows luminosity mask. So in other words, working with the darker tones in the image with curves. So let's just be equal time here and let's work with the midtones. So right below the shadows and the highlights luminosity mask generators are the midtone mask generators. Okay, so again, there's only three of these versus six of the others. So now let's try seeing if we can work with the midtone. So let's start with midtone number one. Okay, so now you can see very gray toned in terms of the very pale, no real saturation color. So as I said right up front, and if you're familiar with masks in Photoshop, blacks, you will do nothing. You can't adjust black. Black will hide. Whites will show or reveal information or content or adjustments. And gray will partially reveal. Okay. So let's see what the number two midtone mask will reveal in this image. Okay. So we've added, just look at the difference. So this is darker. So very little of the midtones will be adjusted, but there's some lightish gray. As we go to two, a lot more lights are showing up. So that means that there can be a lot more adjustments handled with this mask. And then just let's go to midtones number three. Where the, so a lot of more white areas. So that means a lot more of the image can be affected. Okay, so I am for my image and what I think I would like to do with this going to stick with, and let me just again show you the overlay toggle. See, look at how saturated it is. So a lot of this image will be affected by using this midtones mask number three. So now what I would like to do as the output for this mask is to work with a photo filter. And as I said, that's this little icon here. It looks like, a, see a photo, you're taking a photo and there's a filter, so a camera with a filter. So I'm gonna click on that. And so now we have generated a photo filter adjustment layer automatically with this plugin. This is why I like this plugin. And I realize it's it's sort of a lot of steps, but once you start using it, you'll see, oh my gosh, it is like so fast. And you can see that the mask is the exact same mask that we were shown for the midtones three there. Okay. All right, so let me turn that off go over to the photo filter icon there. <laughs> and so now what I would like to do is when I think of things in a distance like this, I often think of lavenders and I tend to like lavender colors in landscapes and there's a little bit of a lavender here. So I want to use the photo filter with a lavender color. If you look down here on my properties panel where I'm focusing um, to just kind of slightly add a hint of lavender to this scene where the light colors on the mask are. So to do that, with the, lay, the photo filter adjustment layer active with the luminosity mask on it, go to the properties panel. Again, yours might be at the top for that. Click on this color swatch and that brings up your color picker. And so for me, I want to come up here to the lavenders and I want to come something, I don't know, and it just, I want to be enough where you can see it, but not too much. All right, so let me, there I've picked the lavender color that I want to work with. And you can see right up here at the top that that's the color I selected. So you would click OK if you want to work with a photo filter. Now we've got the color reflected here that was selected. So now the next thing you have to do is in the properties panel, decide how much density, like do you want very little 
of the color showing or do you want lots? So watch when I'm at the left, it's the original image. When I'm at the right, you can see how much of the color has been added. So you, if you want to do something like do a little bit of a color grading with that or add a hint of a color to something to soften it up or just add a little interest, you just do it to your taste. How much you want? Yeah, you can see that was very yellow. So I'm just trying to take a little bit of the yellow off, give it a little pinkier tone. Okay, I think that's enough for me. I mean, maybe it can be a little more just so you can see that I added it. Now, the other thing that you can do on that adjustment layer, if you do some kind of a photo filter work, is you can decide in your layers panel, right across from where it says normal, there's a little pull down whether you want to use a blend mode. And all you would have to do is just mouse over, just hover, I'm not clicking on anything, and you can see what the different effects are of the different blend modes and whether you want to use anything or not. Okay, so sometimes with luminosity mask, you might want to use a luminosity, but I'm just going to leave mine on normal and leave it at that. So. I've tried to show you now here examples of how to generate luminosity masks for highlights, shadows, and midtones using this Loom Mask panel. And we've been able to put those generated masks onto different adjustment layers brightness and contrast, curves, and photo filter, all from within this plugin. So that's why I said it very fast, the way it works. I, I, as I said, I'm talking all through it and trying to go over and over to sort of hammer home what it is. But when you work with it, it's going to be very fast. Now, keep in mind here, let me just click again as if we wanted to do another one. Um, keep in mind, there is no law that says that you have to do what I just did and do uh, create a luminosity mask for highlights, a luminosity mask for shadows, and a luminosity mask for midtones. You can do multiple loom masks for highlights or multiples of the darks and the shadows or multiples of midtones or only one of one of them. So you just do where, and that's why I said analyze your image, see what needs adjusting, and only work with the one that you need. There's no need to do one of each just to be <laughs> equitable, okay? So just do what's right for your image. So now the thing, and I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't want to do anything else here. The thing to keep in mind too is you don't have to only work with the luminosity masks, okay? So after they are just become another tool in your workflow. So let's say now you've done something like this. Maybe you had a dark image. You could say, hmm, I still want to add a little more brightness to the overall image without working with specific areas that the luminosity masks would focus on. Well, you could come to the bottom of your layers panel, go to the circle with the line through it, which is the add adjustment layer, and you might want to just add a global brightness and contrast layer to your image. And you know it's global because the entire mask is white. So that's why you can see how the difference between an all white or an all black mask, all white would show everything, all black would hide everything. And then the different shades reveal more or less. Okay, so that's what the benefit is of the luminosity mask. But here you can do a global adjustment if you want to. So I don't know, let's just say I want to add a little more brightness to this just to give it a little more pop and bring out what we created in here. Okay, and again, I think I'll do the same thing. I'll just take a little bit of the contrast down. I usually do two or three. Okay. All right. So then, you know, so then you've gone from, let me show you the original. So you can see it, it just transforms your image. I think it, it doesn't go overboard because of the feathering of the edges in these masks. So I think you get a really naturalistic looking approach. And I'm just showing you a landscape now, but I'm going to show you a travel photo in the second demo and a portrait in the third demo. And no matter what you're working with, it'll keep your adjustments very natural. Now, again, let me just quick make a stamp letter and show layer and show you something else optional. This is a stamp layer. 
Okay, and I make that by doing a Shift, Control, or Command, Alt, or Option, and E all at the same time. And it basically is a composite of everything that's come before without collapsing it. So you get like a moral equivalent of a new background layer to work with. My channel is focused on helping you and helping me create fine art photography. I am not into documentary or photojournalism. So what I'm going to show you is if you do something like that, then you can do a sky replacement too and just see how. So edit at the top left of your interface, sky replacement. And I'm not going to noodle with this because it's not about making sky replacements. I'm working with luminosity mass, but once you get your sky that you like um, added and adjusted, then you'd click OK. All right, let me flatten that up. And so, I mean, so you can create a very fine art, lovely image from something that started out kind of dull. And again, you just would have to know if it's something you're doing for either documentary or photojournalism, or if you're entering a competition where the rules say do not add things that were not in the original scene, then you don't do this stage, okay? But I think just making minor and basic um, contrast brightness and hint of color enhancements uh, should fall within the rules of most photo competitions, okay? So that is the end of my demo one, um, where we've shown how to use luminosity masks in order to adjust the brightness and contrast mostly, little hint of color, um, in an image. So in the next demo, I'll use a different photo. It'll be a travel photo, and I'll show you how to use the luminosity masks to adjust colors more so than brightness and contrast. So let me pause this while I get the next image, and then I will be back. Okay, so now this will be demo number two in the video and class on how to work with luminosity masks. So in this demo, I'm going to be working with this coastal scene here of a beach and a shoreline and a girl walking along. Again, this is another stock photo. I just like to give credit. I don't know who did it or I would mention their name. And as I said in demo number one, the first step I highly recommend that you do before you start doing any adjustments, including with luminosity masks, is to evaluate your image first and decide what it is you like, what it is you don't like, what you want to improve and enhance. So when I look at this image, what I see is that the sun, this is a sunset image. And to me, the sunset sky colors need more punch. They need more impact. So that's something that I want to work on is the color and the vibrance for the sky. Um, another thing is the water. So again, to me, the water is seems the ocean seems a little bit washed out. And I feel like that color can be a little bit richer and deeper. Um, the final thing that I think is a primary thing that I want to try to adjust here is this beach. Now, I know that when water comes up onto the shore and then goes out again, it's typically darker than the, the loose sandy part that hasn't gotten wet. But what I'm finding just visually as a story is that I feel this is gaining too much attention here in the foreground and drawing my attention. And I want my attention drawn up in this area here where where the real story is and I want those areas to have more impact and I want this to be played down and less saturation, less intensity. So that's sort of my, I guess, storyboard as it will, if you will, for what I want to work on using the TK Luminosity Mask plugin panel with this image. Okay, so I am going to use the TK uh, Loom Mask panel to generate masks and work with color, as I just said, in this image primarily. So with this background layer open in your layers panel, you can duplicate it either by dragging it to the add new layer icon, which is that box with the plus, or do a control or command J. Okay, and that will jump it up so that you have a copy. Okay, and work with, I always recommend working with the copy. Okay, so now we want to, I already talked about uh, in the previous demo, 
launching the TK Lumask panel if yours is not already open. And I showed you at the beginning of the video how to download and install that plugin from the Adobe Exchange. So here is my TK Lumask panel. I'm going to left click on that. And if yours is already open, then you're all ready to go. So to get to launch into the panel and open it up, you would left click on this tricolor box. And now we have the plugin interface with the pop-up that gives us, helps us generate the loom masks for shadows from one through six to the left, highlights from one through six to the right, and midtones one through three in the middle, and then auto generate a layer, an adjustment layer. Okay, so we're going to work with this now to change the colors. Okay, so let's start maybe with the water color here because I said I wanted to make that a richer color. So given that this is real, and again, you can click on this opposite arrows to see the image. So to me, that water looks rather mid-tone E <laughs> to me. So let's start with this row here that does the mid-tone. So I'm going to click on number one and see what it's affecting. And I can click on this red overlay to see. And that's very pale, so I don't know how much impact that's going to have. So let me just leave that overlay on and see what mid-tone region of luminosity is uh, much better. Okay, so again, I want to work with my water, which is in here. So that is going to be better for me with mid-tones number two mask. Let me see what the number three. Oh, no. All right. So this is too intense and too much of the image. So I'm going to back off and I for my image and for yours, you might want to work with that. So you just have to decide for your image um, how much you want affected. But I'm going to work with the mid-tones mask number two or level two. Okay. Now, because I want to work with the color, then we come down to the output area that will generate the adjustment layer. And I want to work with a hue and saturation layer. So this is the hue and saturation icon. And again, if you didn't watch the first demo or if it's been a while and you didn't uh, see it, it's if you press Alt or Option and hover that over any of these, it'll tell you which adjustment layer will be generated. So this one is hues and saturations and it'll give a description if you want to read through it when you have the time. So I'm going to left click on that and now what I have generated is a hue and saturation adjustment layer just like I said. So look at how fast this is and the mask the luminosity mask that was generated was the same mask that we selected from in this mask generator here. Okay. So now I'm going to work with hue and saturation only on the tones that were the lighter tones, which should primarily encompass in the water area. Now, when I look at this, and again, so we've got that layer active, we've got the properties panel for that hue and saturation layer open. Yours might be at the top. When I look at the water, what I see is a cyan color. If you're not sure, you can use this little targeted adjustment tool. It looks like a finger pointing from inside the properties panel for hue and saturation. Just click where you want to make the adjustment and then look at that. It'll pop it right in there. So um, that I was right. Those are cyans. So I think what I would like to do for mine is, first of all, add a little bit more blue to the cyan because I think that will make it a little bit um, richer looking in the first place. So I'm now in the properties panel for working with just the cyans to affect the water so it shouldn't affect anything else that was in this mask that isn't a cyan color. And I'm just going to start dragging this and watching the image until I see a little bit more blue coming in there. I don't want to totally lose the cyan. So why don't I stay right about there? Okay, and now I want to increase the saturation. So I want that to be richer color too. So again, on the saturation slider, still in the hue and saturation properties. I'm going to start pulling that. And again, you will not be using these exact same numbers. So I'm just saying to make it more saturated, pull it to the right and decide for your image what you like the look of. 
I just keep watching the image and then I stop from time to time so that I see where I am. I think that's pretty good. Let's just see here. I'll turn the eye visibility off and on to see. Yeah, so that's gotten a little bit more blue and a little bit more richness in it. And then uh, because I do want it darker, then the third slider I'm going to go to is the lightness slider. And as you can see, if you want it darker, go to the left. If you want it lighter, go to the right. So I'm going to go left. Okay, so that is better than it was. It has a little bit more punch to it, but I think it still needs some more um, richness to this. So what I'm going to do is add a curve slayer. So again, you don't have to only work with luminosity masks. You mix them in with your other tools. So they're just another tool or process that you can work with. So I'm going to go to a regular curves layer to see if I can add just a bit more richness to this. So bottom of the layers panel, I'm going to come to the circle with the line through it for the uh, add new adjustment layer. And I'm going to come down to curves and left click on that. So now I've added a curves layer to my layer stack. Now I don't want to have to go all the way back through the luminosity mask generation process again when and just to make the same mask so i'm just going to save time and copy this mask and drag it up because i want it to affect the same areas of the image so you would press alt or option and keep it depressed left click on your luminosity mask or any mask for that matter that you want to copy and just drag it up to the blank mask and release and it'll say replace layer mask and you say yes so now we've got the same exact luminosity mask that we can reuse but this time we didn't have to go all through that process of choosing a mask and choosing an output we can just choose an adjustment layer and copy the mask to save time, okay? All right, so now that we have that there, I just want to do the same thing I did earlier in the landscape demo with my curves properties panel, with the curves is active in the properties panel. I just want to crush those blacks a little bit. So I'm gonna to come to the black point and just pull it to the right a little bit till I see a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. So look at that. So there's no adjustment. There's some adjustment. So again, as I said, you're not trying to go nuts or make this look unrealistic. You're just trying to give it some more impact and some more wow factor. Okay, so I am going to leave the water where it is and let's move on to this sunset sky that I think is really washed out. So I want a more vibrant sky here. Now, in this TK panel, let me just open it again here so we can see, none of these output adjustment layers are for vibrance. So I can't just automatically choose a luminosity mask and then go straight to the adjustment layer. It doesn't exist. So what I am going to do is, whoops, <laughs> first I'm going to cancel out. So if I want to cancel, cancel with that. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel again to the add new adjustment layer because I want to add vibrance to that sky and choose, I'm going to choose for mine, a vibrance adjustment layer. All right, so now we've got that there. Okay, it's added that new vibrance adjustment layer. Now I'm going to go in with that vibrance adjustment layer active now I'm going to go into the loom mask panel again and try to create a loom mask that I can apply to that layer. Okay, so left click on the tricolor. And uh, again, this is a sky, so it's bright. So I'm going to work with the highlights. So again, one through six, and you just, all you have to do to see whether it's affecting the shadows or the highlights is look at this tonal histogram in a way behind here to see where it is. So I'll start with number one for the highlights and see if that's going to do it for me. And that's too much. This is still too much. It's going to be affected in this image. That's not bad. 
All right, so I'm going to work with that. So uh, again, looking at my image, just trying to decide here. No, that's too much, so I have to go to three. Um, looking at the image, so if we click on the double-headed arrows there, you can see the image. We've got some blues in here among the pinks. So that is the areas that we're seeing that are more mid-tone is the blues and the pinks will be affected most where it's a lighter color. All right, so once you have your loom mass selected and you want to apply it to an already existing layer, my, my, in my case, it's the vibrance layer, then you come down to this output layer and you click on this little icon right here. And what does it look like? It looks just like this, the lock with the mask. So this is the apply button to apply that luminosity mask that we're seeing right here to this layer. And there we go. So let me just show you we've transferred that mask onto that vibrance layer by hitting the apply. Okay. So again, you're using this luminosity mask plugin just to generate the mask that's going to become what's used to make adjustments on a layer. All right, so now that I have that vibrance layer there, what do I want to do? <laughs> I'm going to, in the, with that highlighted, I'm going to come to the properties panel and in the properties panel, you see you can adjust either vibrance or saturation or both. So for mine, I'm going to start with the vibrance because typically, I'd say go with Vibrance because it's not going to do as um, overreaching or overly done colors as saturation. Saturation alters colors. Vibrance tries to just um, enhance what's there. In fact, typically in most images, if I push Vibrance to the right, I pull saturation to the left a little bit just to compensate. But let's see what happens here. So since I want this more vibrant and watch the image because again, the numbers are meaningless to you because you won't be working with this image but I'm just pulling the vibrant slider to the right to add more vibrance all right let's see what that did so that helped a little bit but it's very subtle so this may be one instance and again as I said in earlier in the video um, these luminosity masks will make subtle corrections and enhancements um, because they have feathered edges so I to me that's a positive thing all right so now let's try saturation and see uh, if that's needed to give this some more color boost. Yeah, this is bringing out more of the color. Normally, I wouldn't go anywhere near this with level of saturation because it would just really be distorting the colors. But this to me is getting a nice color to it. So yeah, compared to before, that's really good. Okay. And now, Here's another instance where you can decide whether up here in the layers panel at the upper right, coming across from normal, whether you think that adding a blend mode might enhance your image anymore. So let's see, there's multiply. So look at what that does. That pops it a lot. Definitely we don't want light and your screen. Overlay, now these don't do anything. Maybe linear. Yeah, see linear burn. So multiply linear burn is even more intense. And then another one I think would be helpful. Yeah, that doesn't help. Would be color. So if you want a more subtle thing. I kind of like the multiply myself. So let's do that. But look what else was happening here. So if you look at the original, I'll just turn the eye visibility off while we're adjusting the sky and making it better. Look what it did to the sand in the foreground. It has made it all yellow and intensified the vibrance because again, just looking at the mask, you can see there's light color here. So because of the way masks work in Photoshop, white shows or reveals and black hides or conceals. So anything where it's lighter, if I'm it's uh, it's adjustable. <laughs> so if I'm cranking up the vibrance and the saturation, this is going to get adjusted. So I don't want that to happen. So what you can do is you can doctor these masks too if you find that they are adjusting parts of your image that you don't want them to. 
So let me put this on here so we can see where we are. All right, so with the mask active on that layer that you're adjusting that has done something to a part of an image you don't want it to do it to, make sure the white frame is around it. Go to your toolbar. Yours might be on the left. My toolbar is docked right. Click on the brush tool. Make sure the black is behind it so that it's active. And as I said, blacks hide. So we don't want to see all this yellow and enhanced color in the foreground. In fact, it was bad when it started. So you want to be sure you are painting with black. And I want to use a soft brush. So up at the top of the interface, you click there with the properties or the, for the, um, or the options for the brush tool. Uh, I have it on soft brush, so that's good. So now I want to make this brush. So my highlighter is just showing you where I am. The black circle is the size of my brush. So if I click on the left bracket key, I can adjust the size of my brush. And I want to paint over this area of the mask. So again, you have to be sure the white is around the mask. You're painting on the mask and not on the image. And all I'm doing is hiding the vibrance and saturation settings that were made that I had to do to get the sky pumped up because I did not want to affect the sand. I only wanted to affect the sky. All right, so that is a lot more impactful than it was. Now, another option you have is, is I mean, certainly when you see a sunset sky, it can be that dark, but if that's more intense than your taste, then you can come to the top of the layers panel, left click on the word opacity and drag it down a little bit, or click on the little down arrow and pull the slider. It's your choice. I like to drag on opacity. And so I just took that down just a little bit. I mean, you can see it. It's added a lot of vibrance to that sky. So now I'm feeling good between the water being richer and the sky being more impactful. So now what I want to do is work with the sand. But before I do this, I'm going to create a stamp layer. To do that, bottom of the layers panel, come to the box with the plus for the add new layer icon right there, and you get a transparent layer. And I want to use that stamp key combo. So you're going to press and hold shift, control or command, alt or option, and E at the same time. And that creates stamp layer. Okay. So that's basically merged all of these without collapsing them. All right. So with that stamp layer, now I want to work on the beach sand that I said, I think it's too intensely saturated and it puts too much tension in the foreground of my image rather than this area of the image. So to fix that, now I'm going to go back to my TK Loom Mask panel plugin. And this time, given the colors that are here, or the tones, I should say, and the colors, um, I think this is probably going to be more of a mid-tone kind of thing. This is a highlight. This is more of a mid-tone. And this is the part I want to tone down is this mid tone -y color. Left click on the tritone to get in here. We're going to come to the row that has the mid-tones. So I just always start at one and see what's happening here. And that's not clearly not going to help me. So that's not bright enough. That's still not enough. All right, so I am going to work with the Midtones 3 Loom Mask. So this is the luminosity mask. It's working on the Midtones in this area. And you know that they're going to be affected because they're pretty bright. You can see if I turn on, you can see it's nice and bright. So they'll get affected by what I'm doing. Click on that overlay again, and it'll toggle off. All right, so this time, since I'm trying to show you different output tools <laughs> to work with in here, I want to show you yet another one, OK? So with my overlay off there, this time I want to lighten this foreground sand. And I'm going to use this mask to do it. And the tool that I'm going to use is dodging. So I don't know if you are familiar with the terms dodging and burning. They're from the darkroom days, but they've carried over into the digital darkroom. And in the darkroom and in the digital darkroom, burning makes something darker. So you can paint on something and make it darker in your scene, which is what this little hand symbol is. And again, you can hold that Alt or Option and hover to get the description. And this is what the dodging tool is. So the one that looks like the lollipop is the uh, 
dodging tool. So I want to use the dodge tool to work with this mask. So I'm going to click on that and see now this is a little bit different look now what you're getting here because it has added a gray layer. Let me just see if I can show you this. So there's all gray so you can see where the selection is working. And it's automatically turned on your paintbrush for you that you'll need to brush with in the areas that you want to lighten. And it has automatically put on white paint to paint with the paintbrush because you're going to light, so you're painting with white. So the thing that I like to do is when I'm painting with something like this, again, with the brush tool active, I come up to the options for that brush tool and I look and I want to be painting with a soft brush here. Okay, so I change that to a soft brush. Just click anywhere up here to close that box. And I want to lessen the opacity and the flow because I don't want to take this down too much. I just want it to be um, a subtle lightening. So I'm going to left click on the word opacity just like I did a moment ago and drag. And usually I would bring this to around the 30 to 35% area. Yeah, somewhere in there, 34. Okay, that's good enough. And then I also want to lower the flow because what flow does is it it builds up gradually. So if you have it 100%, it's laying down your color at full force. If you lower the flow, it will only apply the color at the percent you choose and let you build that color up gradually. So what I like to do is to reduce the flow to about 20 to 25%. Okay, let me leave it at 20 and see how this goes. Okay, so again, now I'm trying to use this brush with white to lighten up this darker sandy area. So I'm going to left bracket or right bracket to make bigger and paint in this area here. Do you see the difference? So watch here because this is more yellowy and darker as I go over it with the paintbrush and dodging it, it's getting lighter. Okay, so now it's still a little bit darker than the foreground. So now if I press Alter Option and click on the eye icon, you can see that only the, I've only affected this one area and lightened that one area where the sand is. Okay, so that is good. So I'm going to turn off that mask with a controller command D. I'm going to shrink that down. And so you can see, look at what we've done here. And if for yours, if you've dodged something and it is a little bit too much, it's gone too far, then you can, again, in the layers panel at upper right, with that layer active, left click on the word opacity and just reduce it a little bit so you get a hint. I can come a little bit more there just to get a little more definition of the beach. Yeah, see now to me this is where I want it to be because there is some differentiation, some textural sense here, but the bulk of the interest is in this area here, which is where the story is. And let me just put this back to my neutral. And so this is the end of the demo here. So let's just see of what we were able to accomplish using these luminosity masks. So these three here and this one here were all based on this TK loom mask panel. So let me just do it before and then after. And again, you can see, at least to me, it's keeping it subtle. It's not like a crunchy HDR image or something like that. It's just enhancing what is there in a natural way. This looks like, at least to me, something that could have come out of camera. And I think it's just in a more impactful version of what 
the original shot was. So that is the end of my second demo. And this was using luminosity masks to work with and adjust color in your image. So I'm going to pause again and bring up the final image for the final demo. And that will be, again, working with some darkness and lightness of a portrait image, just to show you that different genres of images can be, and photos can be used uh, when you're working with luminosity masks. So here, let me just pause. Okay, so now this will be demo number three, working with luminosity masks using the TK Loom Mask panel. And again, this is a stock photo that I'm going to use just to show that you can certainly work with portraits as well. And as I said in demo one and two, and I think it's important for you to think about with your images whenever you're doing any kind of post-processing is first step, just step back, look at it, and say to yourself, what is it that you see? What is working? What isn't? What needs to be enhanced or fixed? And so it, with this, even though it's a stock photo, I feel perfectly at liberty to critique it. So uh, this image to me is dark, and it has a very strong yellow cast to it. So I am guessing that something was off with the white balance when the photographer captured this. Uh, so I think that needs correcting too. To me, it's just like the Yosemite image in the sense that it lacks definition. It's just kind of flat and it needs more contrast. And I'd like to try to give it a more editorial or more of a punchy kind of commercial look, for lack of a better term, for description on that. So um, what I want to do is start using luminosity masks to see what we can do. And then we might need to mix in some other Photoshop uh, native tools as well, just as part of the workflow. So to work on the image again, first thing, duplicate the background. So in the layers panel, either drag it to the box with the plus for the new layer icon to duplicate it, or click on the back, uh, the bottom layer, the background layer with a control or command J to jump that duplicate copy up. All right, then we want to start working with our TK Loom Mask plugin panel. So if yours is not already open, then either click on that or go to your plugins and make sure that you have it active from there. Click on this tricolor box to launch the interface and you immediately get taken into the panel, part of the panel that lets you generate the luminosity mask. So this is the first luminosity mask here that we're going to use. So um, for me, looking at her image, and let me just, this, uh, if you haven't seen my other two videos, first, uh, uh, first two demos, then this is a toggle. So you can toggle to see your original image. So if I look at this original image, to me, uh, these look like mid-tones on her skin. So I need to brighten up her face and hands because of the darkness in this image. That's where I'm going to start. And definitely they seem more mid-tone and the hair seems more mid-tone than like the whites of her eyes and some of these other bright areas. So I am going to work with the mid-tones. Let me put this back to the luminosity mask so I see what I'm working with. And I just always like to work um, from one through six or one through three, depending on what. So the mid-tones is this row here. Okay, so this is not going to help me because this is not going to adjust very much as a gray. It's a little better, but it's her face needs a lot of brightening. So let's just see what three will do. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so now you can see as a mask with all this white, this is what's going to be adjustable once it's on a layer in the layers panel. Okay. So this is going to become the mask for the adjustment. And I said, I want to make it brighter because this is a pretty dark image. So once I've selected my luminosity mask that I want generated, then I come down to this output area here and I want to work with brightness. The little sun is the brightness icon and if you haven't seen or forget from watching uh, or pausing after watching the other demos you can press alt or option and hover over any of these icons and it'll tell you not only what it is but how it works. So this is brightness 
click on that and look in the layers panel that has helped us generate a brightness and contrast adjustment layer with a luminosity mask that looks just like so it's exactly the mask that I wanted on that layer okay so now um, we can add some more brightness to her because she is very dark so with the brightness and contrast adjustment layer active go to your properties panel yours might be at the top mine's at the bottom and make sure that you can see the sliders for brightness and contrast and I'm going to push it to the right to increase the brightness and I just keep watching my image and I stop from time to time to see how I'm going here that's pretty good actually <laughs> I think I'll leave it there and then the contrast I typically if I crank up the brightness I take contrast down a little bit just a touch so I usually just do it around minus two or minus three so I will leave that there okay so that has helped brighten up her face significantly using this luminosity mask okay it's working on the lights and the darks in the image so the next thing I want to work on is it's bothering me that she's so yellow uh, so again I want to lessen this yellow cast probably from wrong white balance with a hue and saturation layer so I want to come to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new adjustment layer icon that circle the line and I'm going to come down to where it says hue and saturation and left click that and again um, you might not need to do this in yours but it's just to let you see that you can alternate between working with a luminosity mask and just going straight to adjustment layers and doing other adjustments in your image okay so now what I want to do is I want since this is predominantly what's striking me as very yellow I want to use this same luminosity mask again all right so rather than going through this whole process <laughs> all over again I'm just going to copy this mask to this layer so I'm going to press alt or option left click on that luminosity mask and drag it up to this hue and saturation layer and release it'll say replace so you say yes so now you've got the exact same mask and you didn't have to go through all those steps again um, using the plugin as fast as it is this was faster to me to just reuse the mask okay so now with that hue and saturation we try to lessen the yellow colors in her face and hands so click on here and we can click on her face let's see so we can use this targeted adjustment tool which is the hand with the finger pointing and just click if you think if you're not sure entirely what color it might be to me this was obviously yellows then if you know just know it's a color you can click on that little down arrow and pick your color or else you can use that targeted adjustment tool to select the color but we want to lessen the yellows in here so I want to reduce the saturation of those yellows so in that properties panel I want to go to the saturation slider pull it to the left to make it less saturated that's better let's see and then I, I sometimes alternate between them because it's kind of becomes a little trade-off analysis kind of a thing and then I'm gonna lighten it to see if that helps with the color fading a bit too so I'll pull the lightness so you can see light darker would be to the left lighter is to the right Satu desaturated you can see is there fully saturated is there so just look at the indications at the end of the bars to know which way to go And as I said, I'm looking for editorial or commercial, so you can go with a little bit brighter desaturated face. And with fashion, you can really <laughs> go with a desaturated face. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine uh, there. Now, what I'm noticing, so I, let me just click the visibility on and off. So we have done some pretty good getting rid of the yellow tones in that image so using the luminosity mask so we've brightened her up and we have lessened the yellow so that's using the same luminosity mask so that to me is progress but now what I'm noticing is that when I zoom in closer on her I don't know if you can see it so let me zoom in a little bit 
I look in people, when I see photos that other people have taken, so I don't know what the setup was, I look in their eyes for the catch lights because it'll usually tell me what the lighting is or where things are. It looks to me, at least as far as I can tell in the quality of this image, that there's a window here. So, and there might be some kind of a light at about a 25 degree angle, 30 degree angle over here. Um, so there, this window light is casting a very harsh shadow on this side of her face and it, it's a real demark and it's kind of blowing out the highlights it's blowing out the highlights on her hand and either a reflector but it, it looks to me like there's a light over there because um, you can see something is casting light from over there too um, so those seem a little bright relative to her skin tone so what i would like to try to do let me make this a little bigger um, so I can see it better, is try to temper these harsh highlights a little bit from the lighting and see if we can soften the transitions between the highlights from the exterior light to her face. So again, I'm going to go to the loom mask and I'm going to work with the highlights because that's what's bright on her face here is the highlights so we're going to work with the highlights which is the one through six to the right here and all you have to do if you forget it is just think of this as like a histogram behind her and the shadows are to the left um, and the highlights are to the right and the midtones in the middle so if we want to work with highlights we would start with number one through six in this direction okay so let's that's on number one let's see what number two does so that's sort of focusing there, but these are still light enough. They might be affected. What about number th Here we go. Okay, <laughs> this is better. So let me see if I can spread this out so we can see a little better. So this mask seems to be really hitting the region where these highlights are. I want to work on what happens with four. Oh, no. So that, all right, so we're getting too dark. So that's what happens. You get past where you want, you come back. So let me just do the toggle overlay to see yeah so this is good i don't need it affecting the background but the areas where the light is hitting either from natural light or artificial light that i want to adjust are in that area so let's stay with the number three lights luminosity mask and i want to adjust it subtly so i think maybe a curve would be the best output adjustment layer so keep that active click on the output layer that you want which in my case is a curve and now we've generated a curves adjustment layer with this luminosity mask that we selected here so now all you have to do is then with that curves layer active go to the properties for that layer and in this case it's a curve and then you adjust the um, points as you want. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with working with curves, but I just am really trial and error with it. I sort of usually start in the middle and just see depending on the image I'm working with. So, And since I don't know exactly where the breaks are in this, I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Maybe I'll push this up a little bit. I watch the image as I do it to see if it's doing anything. Yeah, so that's blending a little bit more there. This might need to come up a little. And this, let's see here. Is this doing anything? It's very subtle if it's doing anything. They come down, maybe I'm too close to it <laughs> to see what's happening. All right, so let me... As I said, it's trial and error. making it lighter up there. I'll pull that down a little. All right, so I think 
Yeah, that's tempered it a little bit. So the transition was what I was, I mean, I don't want to totally eliminate the highlights because obviously it's it's giving her face some definition. What I was trying to get rid of was sort of that line that was, I think that softens the transition between uh, the face and the highlights a little bit. So that I feel okay with. All right, so once we get that, uh, then... And, and again, you might not need to do something like that, but I'm just pointing out what, what my image has in different ways you can work and that this was uh, working with the curves in the midtone. Okay, so now I'm going to make a stamp layer for mine because I want to do something again that is just Photoshop native versus with the loom mask. Okay, so I'm going to come to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon, that box with the plus, and I'll do a shift, control or command, alt or option, and E all at the same time to make the stamp layer. And part of this, even though you're not going to be working with this image, is just I'm vocalizing how I'm looking at the image and what I'm thinking about. So just to say, do the same thing for your image and say, okay, what's working, what isn't, as I've made an adjustment, what else has been impacted, and what do I need to alter? All right, so now what I wanted to do is to, her eyes are very um, dark to me, so I'd like to lighten up her eyes a little bit. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to use the quick selection tool, which is this uh, paintbrush with like a little lasso thing around it here. And I'm going to just hover that. So in this case, the green is my highlighter, the white is the brush. So I'm just going to click in her eye. And since it's gone a little rogue, I'm going to press the Alt or the Option key to switch that to a minus and just paint back so it just stays focused in her eye. And then I'm press and hold the shift key um, to click on the other eye so that the first mask doesn't go away. And I'm not gonna worry about it too much going up into her eyelid. I just wanna give you the idea because you're not working with this exact image anyway. Um, so now what I wanna do with that, that selection of her eyes active, and I'm gonna go back to my neutral tool here, uh, is at the bottom of the layers panel, I'm gonna add a levels adjustment layer. So circle with the line through it, come down to where it says levels, click, and I've got a levels. And again, so I've got the mask with just her eyes. Now um, I want to soften that up because, so this is what I was talking about. So I just made that selection. You can see how hard edged that is. These luminosity masks are doing just what I'm going to do now, which is in the properties panel, feathering the edges. And so they're doing that feathering for you automatically, which is such a nice thing in this. That And that's what helps keep your adjustments look natural because whatever is adjacent, it's sort of blending in gradually, okay? All right, so we're working with her eyes with the levels. So I wanna maybe just do a hint of dark so we don't lose all the dark. Well, maybe that's too much. <laughs> Keep it around one. All right, and then we're gonna work with the mid-tones. Yeah, see, so you can see it's brightening up. All right, I'll leave it there. And then the highlights. be too bright. <laughs> All right, I feel pretty good about that, so let's see. Yeah, so that opened up her eyes, and again, if you're doing it, be more careful about your mask, because this is opening up, and I just, it's, since this is about luminosity masking and not about uh, whatever, take the time you need for yours to make the masks right. Okay, so the point of doing this is to say that the luminosity masks do not have to be part of every single step of your process. You can definitely 
use other tools in the process. Okay, so um, now that I'm looking at this image, let me just go back to the original and see how I'm doing. So this is still a lot better than it was. It maybe uh, could use a little bit of brightening, global brightening. Let's just see. So bottom of the layers panel, I can always delete it if it's not right. Uh, I add adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. And let's see if we add a little bit of brightness. Yeah. Yeah, that helps a little bit, I think. And I want to not wash her out too much. This is a case where I might add a little bit of contrast. Yeah, it needed that extra global pop of brightness. Okay, so that really helped. Okay, so now I'm going to do another stamp layer because I want to change directions again because I'd like to see if I can try to bring out more details in her sweater here. So let's bottom of the layers panel, add new layer icon, the box with the plus, shift, controller, command, alt or option, and E to do the stamp layer. Oops, helps if your fingers are in the right places. Okay, so now what I want to do is I can just tell, having worked with this loom mask tool and this plugin, that even if I go to choose a shadows loom mask, and if I try to go work with any of these output layers or adjustment layers, however you want to refer to them, I'm going to end up with this sweater looking either very milky or else I'm still not going to get very good details. I wanted to try to bring out a little bit more of the details. To me, this sweater has a little hint of green in it, so I'm hoping that maybe bring out the green, or at least there was something in the room that was reflecting green, because I'm at least seeing green in there. Um, so I'm trying to open up some of the details, but I don't want it to get hazy or milky, and I would like some details. And I just know from working with this panel that the loom mask is not going to help me achieve that. So I'm going to cancel out of this by clicking the X and I'm going to use a different method. So let me just subtract that down, minimize that down. I'm going to try using the object selection tool from the toolbar. Again, yours might be left. It's the box with the arrow going into it. Make sure that the black is highlighted. And I'm just going to trace around the area loosely where her sweater, her dark sweater is. And I go outside the image and just let the dots connect and then Photoshop is thinking. Okay, so now it's selected and I will just reduce this a little bit so it stays focused on her sweater. Whoops, wrong thing. <laughs> I meant to do the plus and I did the minus. Okay, let's not get too worried about it. There we go. All right, so now we have a selection around the dark part of her sweater. So I want to convert this selection and this layer to a smart object because I want to go in and use image adjustments, shadows, and highlights. But shadows and highlights over here, there is no equivalent tool to this over in the adjustment layers. This tool is, in Photoshop terms, it's destructive. Once you make changes, you can't go back. It changes the pixels in your image. So what I like to do before going into this image adjustments, shadows, and highlights is to convert my launch layer, I'm calling this the launch layer, to a smart object because by doing that I'll be able to go back in and tweak my settings. It will give you flexibility if you want to use shadows and highlights adjustments to make this a smart object first. So right click in any in the empty space over here, come down on that menu to convert to smart object, left click on that, 
and what it's done, it added a little icon there. Can you see that? That wasn't, it looked like that before. So now it's got the little icon that tells you that this is stamp layer is now a smart object. So now I'm going to go back to image adjustments down to the flyout where it says shadows and highlights. And I'm going to left click on that. And you get this pop-up box that lets you adjust shadows and highlights. And since this is definitely shadow, that's what we want to do. So since we're not adjusting highlights, I'm just going to push all my highlight settings, which is this center area, to the left because I'm not working with highlights, I'm working with shadows. Just to point things out, if you're not familiar with the shadows and highlights, um, I have it set to preview. I keep it set to show more options so that we see all of these different sliders. So if you want to work with it that way, then you can set yours that way too. All right, so the main thing I want to do is adjust these shadows and open them up. So you can see, even with the default settings, we've gotten a little bit more look of some of the details here. We can see that it looks like it is a green sweater. So let's just, I just move these around experimentally. So there's nothing I can say, go to this number or go to that number. So I just want to see if I do the amount of opening of the shadows, what happens here. All right, let me start with that there. What does tone? Oh, so that'll make it a little richer. Yeah, I like that better. It's a little bit too much light. Because I want the attention on her face, but yeah, let me leave it there. And then the radius, I don't know. I'll have to do that experimentally too. So that's how much it will affect. I say, okay. Let me leave it there. All right. And then, as I said, we're skipping highlights because we're working with uh, shadows. So then the next thing we'd come down to this adjustments category and color is essentially saturation. So this slider affects saturation. So you can decide if you want to adjust that or not. So I don't know, let's say if I want it to maybe be a little more green, I can push that up a little bit. All right, so that it doesn't look like, is that green or isn't that green? It sort of says it's a dark green. <laughs> and then the midtones, let's see if we can do anything to affect the details anymore with the midtones, because there are midtones in there as well. Yeah, all right, so as I slide it left and right, I can see what's happening here. So I kind of like that because we're seeing more details than we definitely did in the original. We've got a little bit more color and we're affecting color as well as brightness and contrast in this image. And excuse me, my voice is going here. I'm going to take a drink. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and accept the shadow and highlights adjustments back to this layer. And just to point out what I said, so because we launched as a smart object, we get to see the mask. So if you want to alter the mask, you can. And with this little line that says shadows and highlights, if you double click on that, you can go back into your settings, which if you had not done a smart object, you would not get that ability. So let's just see what we did here. Yeah, so look at that. So you can see how it opened it up. Now, I mean, if that's too much, you can again layers panel right across from where it says normal. You can left click and lessen the opacity a little bit. But I feel pretty good about that. All right, so I am feeling pretty good about that. All right, so now we're at the, I think we've done pretty well, but now let's play with something optional kind of thing, just to show you something else you can play with if you want to. So again, I'm gonna do another stamp layer, bottom of the layers panel, add new layer icon, shift, controller command, alter option, and E to make the stamp layer. All right, so now, I wanted to make her eyes look, I mean, they sort of, when they opened up, you can see they are kind of hazel, but um, I'd like to do something of a photo filter and just give it a little bit more green. So bottom of the layers panel, find photo filter, ta -ta -ta -ta. here we go, photo filter. 
and I'm going to reuse this mask that I created here of her eyes. So alter option, left click on that and just keep alter option to press, drag it up and release, replace, yes. So now I am looking for a green color just to kind of give her eyes a little green to I'm looking for a khaki-ish green. There we go. I'm just going to click OK on that. And then once you get the color that you want, then you can affect the density. To see how green you want it to be. Let me... Oh, yes. All right. If I go bigger, we can see the green better. So it's adding some green in there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that level. Cause I like, and again, this is pretty intense. So I'll take it down just a little bit. All right, so I think that is where I want to be with this. So this is the final demo of working with luminosity masks interweaving them with other native Photoshop tools to work on the luminosity, the brights and darks and midtones of your images to make tonal corrections to add impact. So let me just see the before and the after. And again, as I said, I was going for sort of a commercial or editorial look with this. Now, granted, if somebody was doing full retouching for this, which this video isn't about, there are different things you could do with her skin and stuff too, with either with frequency separation or whatever, but um, that's beyond the scope of this video. So I think we've done pretty well from the original to the final image here. So in summary, uh, the luminosity mass uh, adjustments can help make your images more attention grabbing, more impactful. They can cre uh, create or correct problems in your image, but they do so and help you do so in a subtle, not overworked looking way by letting you pick selected image areas based on darkness or lightness, in other words, shadows and highlights, and it can do so with those very softened, feathered edges of the masks. It's a very targeted adjustments that you can make, which I think is fabulous versus big global sweeping adjustments. Um, so in this part one workshop, I showed you how to work with this free, let me click on it here, TK Loom Mask plugin that you can get from the Adobe Exchange. I showed you how to get it and how to install it. And then I've showed you three different demos of how to work with it and how it auto generates not only luminosity masks based on your choice of highlight, shadow, or midtone regions, but then it also will generate adjustment layers for you much quicker than if you were to manually create luminosity masks. And that's a very long process. So I will show that in another video if you want to work with that versus the panel. But I'd say just experiment with luminosity masks. Um, it's definitely useful, as you can see, with different genres of photography, whether it's landscapes, portraits, travel, commercial, wedding, whatever it is that you're doing. But it's like anything, you know, it seemed like there was a lot of steps here to go through. So the more you work with these luminosity masks, the more intuitive you'll become about which masks will work best for you in the darks, the lights, the midtones, and which adjustments will work best using that mask to help you achieve your photo goals. So take care and uh, be patient working with this. It's, it's one of the more difficult kinds of tools to work with. Take care.